Just what is a simple life, anyway? At one time, I thought I knew. But as with all valuable knowledge, the answer is usually simpler than the question, pun intended. A simple life is not necessarily led by a simple mind, nor does it define a person as ignorant or unaware. On the contrary, by my own definition, it means that, as individuals, we have let go of many of the complexities the social structure has imposed upon us. Aware, yet unmoved by the goings-on around us, the simple mind knows when to let go and when to hang on. Most of the battles we fight are internal, and we seem to revel in the drama and victimhood. We can scream at the sky all we want, but we soon learn reality doesn't give a damn. There are a thousand and one quotes about this fact, but the one that comes to mind is, life's a bitch and then you die. This is all perspective, of course. So what can we do about it? We can live a thoughtful, philosophical life and try to do what we can to enjoy ourselves while we grow. Living a conscious life is no easy task. Without even knowing it, we find ourselves buried under the weight of our own obligations and identities. Who are we? What do we want from life? From ourselves? From others? We do not have to answer these questions in detail, as our needs and desires ebb and flow like the tides. But when the stormy season is upon us, those waves can crash far upon the beach. We are faced with the erosion of simplicity, and complexity rears its ugly head once more. For merely choosing to live simply is only one part of the equation. Those obligations imposed upon us are not always avoidable, and we must take, make hard decisions whether we like it or not. Is life fair? What kind of idiot thought up that question anyway? Oh yeah, I just did. Well, the answer is subjective. It depends upon your outlook on life in general. There are too many factors to consider. At any rate, what is the definition of fair? Freedom from self-interest, prejudice, or favoritism. Well, I can't say the if the universe has prejudice, but I do assume it has self-interest, being the universe and all. By that definition, I suppose we are all unfair by default. Or how about this definition? Conforming with the established rules. Sure, I'll bite. When we look at the established rules, they are clear. Everyone dies. All fades to black. And new life takes its place. And we need to be okay with that. We really do. If we are truly one with the universe, it should not matter if we return as a human, or a pile of ashes scattered in a gust of wind, should it? Well, it does. To us, anyway. But I digress. Or do I? Can we avoid the deepest questions even if we choose a simple life? Can we program a simple mind for ourselves, and if so, what defines simple? And what if we have already opened Pandora's box in our own lives? I ask this because, though I yearn for a farmhouse on a quiet plot of land, to work in the fields and sew my own clothes, the complexity of thought will never abide. I'm curious and must ask the big questions in this life. We cannot hide from our curiosity. We can numb it with drugs or alcohol. We can create elaborate belief systems to concrete our faith and stop questioning reality. We can even choose ignorance over education and refuse to listen to others. But the mind will seek answers to questions we have not asked yet. It must ask. It is who we are. There is no escape. It's written clearly on the wall. Our nature is one of searching of creating, inventing, sharing. And if we abide by that law of mankind, we can do amazing things. Nobody can deny our curiosity. It is a defining factor that brought us to where we are now. So what does this mean for the simple life? It means redefining our position on what simple is. We can lead less complex lives merely by choosing to rid ourselves of mental baggage anxiety, and frustration. We can let go of our biases against others, at least to the extent we keep our emotions in check. We can let go of material things that no longer bring us joy. Some people even take it to the point of minimalism. 
in hopes of clearing their lives out. <laughs> this may work temporarily, but nothing in the physical world will resolve confusion in the mind, except thinking things through and accepting what we cannot know or change, and knowing the difference. We humans tend to let others dictate how we think and how we feel. This is natural, considering how insecure we are all deep down inside, and realizing this can be freeing. Funny creatures we are. So what does this mean for those seeking simplicity? I don't know. I have no solid conclusions, except that which I have found in myself. Let go of bias. Try to understand your enemy. You might find you don't have as many as you thought once you get let go of your judgments. Don't dwell on your anger. Let it go and move on. Anger is natural, but our energy is precious and shouldn't be wasted on trivial ego defense. Avoid toxic people that make you feel like shit to be around. That's pretty self-explanatory. Not always easy to do, but always well worth the effort. And give up on any dreams of being rich or famous merely to be accepted in life, by ourselves or others. Because if those are the sole goals we have, we're missing the point. Fame and fortune are results, byproducts of efforts, not goals in themselves. There's nothing wrong with enjoying wealth, of course, so long as you know it doesn't buy any long-term contentment, and that fame has a dark side as well. What we really want is community love, and acceptance. When we lack these things, we seek it elsewhere in material goods and bad attitudes. We should be proud of who we are and grateful for what we have. But we cannot limit ourselves because we feel guilty based on what others tell us is right and wrong. We must know it deep down inside. This means we must be thinking people and take the time to try and understand one another. If we let belief systems dictate what conflicts with our own hearts, we will often be miserable and take sides in every battle of faith. So how does all this reduce complexity? It quiets that voice in the back of our head, that thing we call conscience. It tells us when we are screwing up, when we live within the boundaries of what we know to be right and true, and it works for us, we do not beat ourselves up daily over our decisions or lack thereof. Living too simply can backfire, and we know that too. We want to get our hands dirty, and each of us has a unique level of complexity regarding various issues in the world. We feel pulled to create and be part of the whole, and I think that's beautiful. No matter how much violence or hatred I see in the world, it pales in comparison to the interconnectedness and love that is shared between a group of friends enjoying a concert together or a couple sipping coffee on the back porch on a crisp fall morning. Beauty is the default mode network of existence. We just have to wear the right mindset in order to see it. And, of course, we deserve to be happy. Indeed, this is a beautiful world. When seen through the right lens, it looks quite simple indeed. All in its place, all in its time. The raven circles overhead, the pine sways in the evening breeze, the cicadas, cicadas, cicadas rattle off their solos, and the river gurgles along to its end, opening up into the vast roaring ocean to be shared across the world. As everything dies, new life is born, and the cycle continues. The chances of me being here are so amazing there's no way to calculate. And that is the beauty. I have no need to. I just am. And one day, I will not be. And that is something I have to be okay with. I tried to keep this simple, but as usual, the complexity of the written word got the best of me. That cumbersome thing we called language, in all its glory, with inflection, intent, sarcasm, resolve, and meaning to be interpreted by the listener based on our preconceived notions of reason, feeling, mood, and purpose. Or perhaps I digress again. Thought is that way, and feelings. 
It is a choice to be happy, and a choice to untangle the wires inside our minds. So goes life. Be well, my friends, and thanks for listening. Thanks for coming to Carpo's Channel, yo! Yeah.